What's up, everyone? I'm Shafi Malik, and you're listening to the Who Dropped the Popcorn podcast. The premise is simple. One of us picks a film that we know none of the others have seen. Also, I'd like to take this opportunity to tell my fellow hosts and listeners that I hope you've not masturbated today. We need you sharp and ready to go. <laughs> the premise is simple. The rest of the group watch the film, and we get together here to discuss it. Joining me tonight is Kyle Hammond. Hey. Andy Newlands. <laughs> I want to ride the pony. And all the way from the very north of Jersey, Dave McHugh. Buongiorno. Wow, that was amazing, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a warning, we'll be going into heavy spoilers. So if you haven't seen the film, we thoroughly recommend you watch the film before listening to this. And also, I got uh, another warning for you. I have just poured myself uh, quadruple vodka and coke just <laughs> to get through talking about this film so Shafi what film did you choose so I have chosen 2018 sorry to bother you uh it's written directed by Boots Riley of uh, the coup fame and the reason why I chose this well here in Jersey there there's a human rights film festival that's going on well that's going to be at the towards the end of this year in our local art center and I've been given the privilege to curate it so, what? Um, wow. Yeah. So, you told us um, this. I think I did, didn't I? No, you don't tell us anything. Uh, so, this was one of the films that I sort of vetted in order to sort of, we, we, I didn't, it didn't end up making the shortlist, but um, this is one of the films that I, I kind of um, I watched in preparation to sort of choose what, what I could wow. sort of choose because um, they've gone by the, the theme of Black Lives Matter. So, yeah. I, and so, when I watched this, I was like, this is perfect for the for the pod because uh, there's quite a lot to discuss, and I don't think you guys would have seen anything that similar to this. So, <laughs> who has? Yeah, <laughs> and another thing is that um, what I've sort of figured out my past three choices of films is that I my barometer of choosing the film is what is going to get the most visceral reaction from Andy. We used to work for the same company and th- there used to be sales pep talks and it would oh sort of God. be a bit cringy. Uh, yeah. And it sort of reminded me of when, when there was a scene of a sales pep talk, it kind of reminded me of the stuff that we used to do and we had oh. to sit through and the stuff that we had to uh, oh. perform ourselves. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and I think it was probably more cringy what we were doing, but. Yeah. But, you know, I thought it would hit a nerve of Andy. Yeah. So that's why I sort of chose the film. Wow. Um, wow. So, Andy, would you care to recap the film? Hey, 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 what's that you say? It's Andy's articulate analysis. Oh, listeners, listeners, listeners. This film, I'm going to recap at a high level. <laughs> I'm not going to do what I did with Jalica 2 and try and peel the layers away. We can do that later on. Okay, there is this dude, Cassius Green. Cash Green. Basically, he's living in his uncle's garage with his girlfriend, Detroit. She's an artist and they're struggling to pay rent. Basically, Cassius gets a, a job at a telemarketing company called Regal View. And uh, he's not doing really well until this... Um, old co-worker played by Danny Glover teaches him how to use his white voice and uh, basically this uh, I don't know white affluent relaxed persona that he then adopts and it's insane like he's not actually doing it it's like it's dubbed it's actually dubbed but fucking it's so good <laughs> he uh, <laughs> he um, excels at this and um, yeah he just becomes uh, very very good at selling um, for Regal View and Basically, this is good for him because he's wor- <laughs> he's working his way up to be uh, to get upstairs to become a power caller. So whilst he's working his way up to uh, become a power caller, um, his co-worker, who's the actor in The Walking Dead, um, the Korean actor, uh, I-, I don't know his name, I'm so sorry. Stephen um, Young. There we go. Thanks, Raf. He um, he meets him and he's like, "Hey, look, we you know we can't be working on commission. We've got to we've got to get like paid for this. We need union representation. It's just it's it's just a bit mental. Like he he he's like 
he's like wants to <laughs> wants to help but he's like selling out at the same time it's like now nah, I, I need to, to, <laughs> do, you I need to do you remember the scene where he's he's uh they're standing in front of the crowd and then he's he's ranting about all the things that's you frustrating nice, him. yeah he, he's <laughs> frustrating and then he says uh uh and no more stds <laughs> and it's like a big <laughs> lots of silence from the crowd yeah. So yeah, man. So so basically, like, the, yeah, the dude's in telemarketing, and he's he's doing really well. And um, you know, as he's progressing in his job, he's um, you know, there's adverts on the telly. It's kind of weird. It's like set. It's set in. The, it's like a future that's not too far away from the present, but with a little twist. So it makes it like a dark, satirical, fantasy sci-fi. I don't know. Maybe that's not, that's my view on it anyway. So um, good show. Yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd, so I'd, yeah, 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 I'd agree. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes like when you're watching the film, like there'll be like these adverts for this company um, called Worry Free. And basically like Worry Free, it's mental. It's like if you ever played Grand Theft Auto, it, it reminds you of those like those companies where they're all playing like hacky sack and everything's lovely. But like the reality is if you go and work for Worry Free, you, you basically go in. It's like prison, basically, with wallpaper. So you go in there, you get a bed in a little room. And yeah, the room's got bunk beds and wallpaper, but it's a prison cell. And you get three square meals a day and um, and you have to work on a production line. So it's basically slave labor. And again, Shafi's much more articulate. He can go into the hidden meanings of all this stuff later. So that's going on in the background. There's a TV show that, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's like kick the shit got, out of me or I, something. I got, like, I got the shit beaten out of me. Or I got the yeah. shit kicked out of me, yeah. And like, it's basically just a show where people go on and just get kicked in the face and punched in the face and have to go in vats of shit and stuff. So that, again, we can talk about why Boots Riley did that. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so Cassius becomes a power caller. And when he gets in the golden elevator, like Willy Wonka, he goes up to the, the next <laughs> floor and... Um, he finds out what they're selling and basically they're selling they're working essentially for lots of bad companies such as what did i call it no worries or no worry worries. free worry free yeah, yeah. Worry, free, worry free and um then then there's just half an hour of like him doing that and he's falling out with his girlfriend and she's like no nah, you're not like you know this isn't you and all the rest of it and then there's like <laughs> and then you're like okay this is kind of weird i'm kind of liking this there's some amazing amazing shots on the screen where when he's making the calls he's like his desk falls through the floor and then he's like, you know, bang, he's in the room with the couple having sex who he's life he's interrupted. <laughs> and then bang, he's next to this Japanese guy who's on the toilet and he's, you know, it's just fucking really wonderful stuff. Anyway, he ends up, um, he ends up at the CEO of Worry Free's house. And this is when the film starts to get, it, it doesn't like depart massively from the first half, but it gently slides into a more surreal, dark, twisted world of madness. And it's, it's soon into this bit where I stopped the film and I had to go and find my wife and said, look, <laughs> you don't know anything about this film, but just watch what happens when this guy needs the toilet. And she <laughs> now thinks that Shafi's the most mental person in the world because she's got no context about the rest of the film. Um, so she watched that out so, of context of the rest of the film? Yeah, she didn't yeah, watch yeah, any yeah. of the other films? Yeah, she was like, well, what we is all this, kind like, of watched it out of context. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, was- exactly. <laughs> So basically, like, um, yeah, he's at this party and, yeah, you know, the, the, he's one of the, the only few black people there. And, um, you know, he ends up like the white people and the CEO, they basically treat him as a performing monkey, in my view. They're like, sit here and we want to hear you rap and we want to, you know, all these stereotypical things that the, 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 the film is um, commenting on. And it's a bit awkward and stuff. And then, God almighty, here we go. So then he goes for a private meeting with the, um, the CEO. And the CEO gives him what he thinks is cocaine. So he snorts a load of cocaine, suspected cocaine. And then the CEO's like, right, I'm going to tell you what, what I need from you. And he's like, I'm really sorry. I need you. Um, I really need the toilet, which I thought was really funny because I've been in those situations where you're like talking to a big <laughs> boss at work or something, or you're trying to, you know, you've sold yourself <laughs> out, you're acting, you're not being yourself or whatever, and you need the toilet. So he goes to the toilet, but instead of going into the right room, he walks into a room that looks like showers. And even at this point, you're still okay with the film. You're like, okay, this is fine. This is just a satirical. And then he hears a voice, uh, which happens to be um, Forrest Whitaker's voice, yeah. s- saying. I've only um, discovered that recently. Saying, I mean, yeah, mate. Yeah, research yeah. on the film taught, taught me that. Credit where credit's due. And it basically says something like, help me, help me, I'm, I'm hurting. And then it's basically Pinocchio on crack for about <laughs> 20 minutes. He opens like the shower door and a giant half horse horse <laughs> human falls out 
with like the biggest dick on the show <laughs> and it's he's like help me help me and then there's like just loads of these like oh, i can't remember what they're called like equinoxes does he call them or like they're basically pony people let's call them for the sake of this <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Right. Equus sapiens. So he's like, he's clearly freaking out. Like, like, I defy any one of you to be in that situation and not freak mm-hmm. out. So he runs back to the CEO, and the CEO is, is just like this crazy villain. He's like, just chill out, watch the video. And like, the video <laughs> basically is like, yeah, well, it's just natural evolution. We need the workers to to work harder and work faster. So we've devised this powder that the workers sniff, and then they turn into these beings. And at this point, Cassius is just like, well, this is fucking insane. And then like, the out. CEO like, says, I'll offer you £100 million pounds if, you, if you become one for five years and basically become their Martin Luther King. So you're, they'll think you're their leader, but actually you're working for us, which is just excellent to ponder on whether <laughs> that happens in reality anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, but he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. And then, um, then he starts like, you know, joins, sorry, I'm missing out a few bits, but he joins like, the, there's always been like a revolution going on outside. And um, oh, I'm trying to think like this because it's so mad the last 20 minutes. Like he, one of the riot police, like knock him out during one of the right, one of the protests. Right. And then he's yeah. sort of in, he's in the climax is when he's in the van locked up. He doesn't know what's going on. Yes. And he and finds he's watching, that- yeah. 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 And basically through this, through the, slit of the van that he sees he just sees the most surreal like honestly, i can't believe what i was watching i thought i'd gone insane um and then and then yeah fast forward we'll talk about the film more detail, but fast forward like everything seems okay and then he gets back with his missus who i don't really like his missus by the way i'll get into that in a bit more detail later and i've also missed out this massive bit where she does this mad art show and mm-hmm. puts on a little british voice and gets i think some sort of blood and bullets and telephones thrown at her and all the rest of it but um he closes the garage door and it hits his face. And then when he turns around, he's turning into one of the pony people. And then the next scene is him with some other pony people as a fully, fully turned pony person going <laughs> into the CEO's house. Bang. Film closes. Oh, I'm drink now. <laughs> Over to you guys. It's mental. It's very, very good. It's very good. It's <laughs> mental. It's the most mental film I've seen in a long, long time. And I don't know how anyone at work is going to feel about this because they're all listening to this. So they talk to me about it. And most of them have liked Ford versus Ferrari and Closer to the Edge. So this one, I might, yeah, I might get demoted. So this was uh, played on terrestrial TV a few days ago. So do you, do you guys... That's pure coincidence as well, that, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pure coincidence, isn't it? Does anyone know anyone else who's seen it and it's re- and their reactions to it or not? No. I've no. Everyone I've spoken to has no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I explain to them the plot, they're like, well, you're like, you're insane. Like, you actually give away the big, the reveal, the third act. Yeah, because so most of them are never going to watch it. So they're like, look, I'm never going to watch this. Tell me. So I'm like, all right. And then they're like, well, that sounds like the biggest bunch of garbage <laughs> in the world, which is annoying that it's their reaction because it's so well shot and so smart, this film, that it's a shame that most more people aren't watching this. Because the whole white voice thing, if I had to describe that to someone, I don't think they would really... But it's what you're doing right the... now, isn't it? You can stop, you can, yeah. you're, amongst, you're amongst friends, mate. You can stop doing your, your white voice. So Yeah, but I've got, uh, who would be my, <laughs> who would do my white voice though? That's the thing, who would... Who would be the actor doing my white voice? <laughs> Richard Ayoade. Which, uh, yeah, uh, but it, no, the thing is, if you describe that, you wouldn't really think of it, but you wouldn't really sort of, as in you, the joke would be sort of lost on you. You ha- it's that, it's that, that sort of scene has to be watched to sort of get the sort of full impact of it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. If I describe yeah. to you, there's a black guy, but there's a white guy doing the voice over. It doesn't really sort of, um, that joke doesn't really sort of have the effect that it, that it does until you actually sort of see it happening. Mm-hmm. That's what I think mm-hmm. anyway. Because when Danny Glover just comes out with it, you're like, what? what? It's, it's mental. <laughs> so yeah, Andy, did you, when I sort of said um, there were things that sort of reminded me of the sort of corporate grind, did you yeah. sort of feel, have yeah, similar so- feelings or? Yeah, so I'm very fortunate, and this might be due to my age and experience, etc. But I'm very lucky now in the. So I still work in finance, but I, I can, I'm very relaxed in my role, so I can be myself, and you know, I'm like with, with clients and stuff. You know, no, not like anything unprofessional, or whatever. But you not can, fully yourself. Um, relax. No, no, no. But you know, like you know, being you <laughs> yeah, on a, yeah, a night yeah. out in the pub, you wouldn't act like that in front of a client. But you're not. 
<laughs> uh, I found in the bank that I worked with with Shafi when I was in my 20s, it was very much like this, like a lot of acting, a lot of like trying to climb the ladder and to climb the ladder, you had to dress a certain way and speak yeah, a certain yeah. way and go to certain events and blah, 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 blah. These days, it, I don't have to do any of that. And maybe that's because I, I appreciate, God, do you know what? You don't actually have to do that <laughs> to be yeah, successful, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's just yeah. not not required um but in the environment that i'm in anyway but in the environment we were in oh my yeah. goodness it was very much like it was just clones and every you know every <laughs> we, we worked in a branch and you could go into any single branch across the country and there'd be a hundred shafi maliks a uh, hundred andy newlands is a hundred just the same sort of individual saying the same things coming out with the same stick but as soon as five o'clock comes bang that that that's gone and you, you can just be <laughs> yourself again but it's um that fake world that we had to live in in the bank just to to get up um is represented incredibly well in this film like I, like even when they were there's a bit in the scene where they were like fuck regal view fuck regal <laughs> view and just without even thinking i was i was and i'm not going to say the name of the, the bank we used to work for but <laughs> i was i was screaming at the telly fuck the bank fuck <laughs> yeah, the yeah. bank like, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Totally, yeah. Chef. I'm with you 100%. Kyle, I don't know whether you have this in your current job, but when Boots Riley was describing what, like, the whole concept of a white voice, he said that the diff, you know, there's a, there's a difference between what we use every day and what what is described in this film. Because he says a, a white voice is basically, and D- Danny Glover does actually describe. It, he says that it's really about sort of being having a persona that you have, sort of like all your bills paid. And all your, you know, you're sort of affluent, you're sort of on the same level as them in order to sort of coax them into sort of buying stuff. But but when, going back to when he says that, you know, there, there's a difference between sounding just your normal voice and sounding proper. Do you, I've got a theory that everyone has a proper voice. Do you agree with that? And is that something you do as well? To be honest, I'm quite fortunate I don't really speak to many people, but I do email a lot of people. So, of course, in your emails, it's not like, all right, G, you know, it's like, hello, <laughs> kind regards, Kyle Hammond, you know. So, yeah, yeah there's that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, with, with personas, I was in a band for many years. And um, before I used to go on stage, I'd, like, look in the mirror and I'd just, like, it wasn't me anymore. I'd just become the rock star me. Yes. Right, right. And when you're wow, pretending, that's... you don't get nervous. It's strange because it's not you. It's, it's someone else. Yes. Become wow. your vision. This is quality. Right, sure. okay. Interesting. So did that person have a name? This is like Beyonce. This is quality. Yeah. <laughs> um, how about you, Dave? Do you feel like you've got a proper voice? Like a like a, a because you know, you're you are dealing with customers. So do you feel like you're putting on a proper voice? No, you... because because my job is so shit. Uh, I don't put on any form of persona. I <laughs> don't care. And like the bottom line is, there's just such a spectrum of people that come in. It just doesn't matter. And the people that you might think are great, for all you know, who know that they may have a den at home filled with God knows what, they come across as nice. So because it's the full spectrum, I, I just have no persona. I am completely myself at work. Because it's I sort of disagree. No what I don't know. I've seen you at work where you do, and I'm not saying that you put on like a formal voice or anything like that. But I think you do sort of put on, and I hope you don't get offended. But when I say this, but you do sort of put on something white where you're. Voice. It's not a white person <laughs> voice. It's sort of like a. You know, all right, hi, hi. You know, all right, mate. How you do? Like as if you're. Um, oh, I've heard it three yeah. times saying it's really polite, Dave, but it goes like, oh, hi, 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 how are you, how you doing? You okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's lovely, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I maybe, agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are customers I am genuinely pleased to see. That that is a case with like customers that come in quite a bit. But yeah, I guess, I guess there is an element of bullshit. You know, it is always, oh yeah, all right, see you now, bye, have a good day. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's all bollocks. Yeah. Every single person is a, just a load of bollocks, aren't they? Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, because we I, we've got a um, a, a Geordie person in our in our team, and she's like got a proper like uh, like strong Geordie accent. But when she picks they up the phone, do. she picks up the phone. It's sort of like a you know she. I mean, obviously, she can't get rid of that Newcastle accent, but you can tell that she's just got a, a phone voice. Mm-hmm. You know, 
and uh, <laughs> um, but I, I think it, I think it is interesting that we we've, we've all got like one certain persona that we've got with people that we're familiar with, but then the people that we're not familiar with, we sound proper. I guess mm. you know? I I think the majority of people are like that. I'm sure. I'm sure your average. I'm sure there are people that just <laughs> don't give a fuck when they talk to people, <laughs> and you know. Yeah, there's about I'd say about five percent of people operate. Uh, you know, this is me. <laughs> You'd say it me as you like. You know, they just know, completely man. themselves in every situation. Maybe ten percent. If anybody's been to a cafe or restaurant in recent weeks, given the whole employment crisis, there is a lot of people who do not give a fuck working in those kind of jobs. <laughs> I mean, there was beforehand, but even it's even worse now, man. Honestly, <laughs> nice. I thought they'd be wanting to keep their jobs so they'd have to sort of you know, dance to the tune. David Mitchell said one of the things he loves about Britain is is um, like people's like, he loves the fact that it's got poor customer service because he's like, people <laughs> people sign a contract to, to work. They shouldn't be forced to have to pretend to like jobs <laughs> they hate because in his mind, that's either the sign of a, of a liar or a moron. And I'm with him on that. So like, if if you're on a train and you're go, you know, it's Monday morning and it's raining and you're getting hassled and you're you're going around that train collecting tickets, why the fuck should you have to pretend to be a happy go lucky <laughs> motherfucker? Like, you're gonna be miserable. So yeah, 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 I haven't yeah. got a problem with that. Like, good good for them. Good for Britain. Yeah, I was just gonna say that most of them are fucking off to OnlyFans, aren't they? I don't know what that is. I've gone, I'm married. Uh, yeah, well, there you go. I think I think you just said the right response there. I'm married because uh, yeah, you might get know. in a bit of trouble if you went into. I don't know what that is. Sorry, guys. Well, maybe it's a football thing. Thanks, Carl. <laughs> is it a porn site? Don't know, Dave. So back to the film. <laughs> <laughs> um, we never talk about the film. We always just go off, off on tangents. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about, about the film. Only fan porn. Yeah. <laughs> um, Again, don't know what that is. <laughs> so yeah, Dave and I were talk we're having a conversation last night, and uh, I don't. I mean, we'll see sort of how Dave feels whether it's relevant to this film. But he has theory that no one. Do you want actually, t- Dave? You just you. Uh, I can't really describe what I mean. That's the problem. I think <laughs> I don't know. Like you can set out to make a film that you're going to divide opinions. I know, but I don't think you can properly ever set out fully to make a film that will be loved or hated. I just, maybe not loved or hated, I just can't describe what I mean. A film that will become a cult classic or something. I don't think it's, it can be a hundred, a very much, I don't think it'll be a hundred percent deliberate. I don't, I don't know, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I, I probably am wrong. But I so just in, the, in, the, in the context of this film, right, I don't think Boots was writing this film thinking everyone's going to be on board with this. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think he. I, but I still think he wants everyone in the world to love his film. I do. I mean, but it's, maybe not. I mean, it's anti-corporate, man. So it's anti-capitalism, man. You've lost, especially in America, you've lost a massive chunk of your audience straight away. Yeah, I suppose. And it's coming from a black perspective as well. So yeah. Yeah. if you're attacking a certain group of people, then I guess then that's a way of making a film that is won't be liked unless I've got a fantastic sense of humor then I guess I, I don't know I just I guess I mean I just films that seem to be like oh I love that or I hated it that has no political agenda or anything like that it's just weird it's like shit you lo- ab- some people absolutely love that film and some people absolutely hate it I don't think you can deliberately set out to make a film like that there isn't maybe more than a film that doesn't have a hidden message or something it's just like shit I really like that film shit I really hate that film it's just weird I don't know I don't know I just don't think you can deliberately set out to make those sort of films. A film that may be diversive, yeah, of course, but a film that is just gen- a genuine run-of-the-mill 90-minute film film, I don't think you can deliberately set out to make a film that will be loved or hated, a Marmite film. I just don't think you can. But I don't know, I, I'm not sure this is a forum to discuss my, my opinion on that. I think this film is the correct film to talk about that because I think... I don't know. I feel like this All is a four film of us that... love this film. All four of us have loved this film, though. It's no, but, but, no, but however, I, you're talking about cult films, and I think this is a film that is one of those films that one has not, necess- not necessarily really been... cult films. Not necessarily cult films, but, but that's a good example of these cult films that seem to come out from nowhere. But, like, I mean, I fucking love Event Horizon. Like, I fucking love that film. And it's one of those, it's interesting when someone goes, there are, there's also the other ones where someone goes, I get it when, if someone hates the film. There are other people that just are like, 
this film is so good, I can't even understand why someone would hate it. And other people might be like, oh, yeah, I get why some people hate this film. I do. But for me, I'm just like, I don't know. I, yeah, I can wrap myself up in my own argument. I just don't know. So the fact that it is I'm probably wrong. But yeah, I really, really like Event Horizon. I love that film. God, I love that film. If, uh, Andy I mean, if, and Shudner, if Shudner hadn't got involved, man, we'd have had two hours of some of the best horror ever, man. Andy and Kyle, have you seen uh, Event Horizon? Yeah, I yes. can't remember. A long time ago, man, I can't remember. It's amazing. I, so I watch Event Horizon at least once a month. <laughs> <laughs> Do you I put it on it, the background while you're doing yeah, your chores? Yeah, so basically, and... like, lots of people... I think we watched it in the flat for the first time. I think that was yeah, the first yeah, time you saw well, it. We would have done it. Yeah. Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, me and Dave used to live together. So you would have seen that, Dave, with me, definitely, because I've been watching it once a month for about a decade yeah, could... now. Because I think I said my I think you'll like it. I into. <laughs> it's a nice, easy, <laughs> easy film just to have on in the background. Right. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> have all the films of Event Horizon. <laughs> yeah, mate, when, Event, Event <laughs> Horizon is amazing. Right. When are we getting the TV show? When is that coming out? What TV show? So TV show Event Horizon. Oh, might be. Really? There's lost footage of it, VHS footage and stuff. So if you yeah, look at some of the, if you look at some of the cut scenes where he comes back to life and stuff, you know, after no. being sucked out and the yeah. ship brings him back to life. These cutscenes are nuts that were taken out of the film. They're some of the best parts of the film. It's like... One of my favourite things to do with Event Horizon is just randomly to pause it and see what's on the screen. And if you get really lucky, oh, yeah. you get like one of the... That's, honestly, that's a great game to play. Everyone does that. Imagine how mad that behind-the-scenes shit would have been, like, prepping those Be scenes. Mental. I know. Make up for hours for that, for what is a yeah. split second inside Lawrence Fishburne's yeah. mind. One time at, at the flat, I had my mother-in-law over and um, Dave <laughs> didn't know she was in the house. And um, she came downstairs and um, Dave was butt naked in the kitchen berating himself over something he'd done wrong at work, which probably was some minor thing. And he's going, oh, <laughs> you stupid bellend, you stupid fucking bellend. And then she was like, didn't know what to do because she thought he was insane. So she slowly walked away from his big white ass. And then um, <laughs> that evening, that evening, I was like, what did you do with your day today? And she said, I, I didn't do much, but I think your, I think your housemate might be insane. Maybe that's pretty slightly, normal. slightly true. That's pretty yeah, normal. Was she actually <laughs> staying in the house? Yeah, she came over to stay. Oh, my God. And, like, God. months before that, she'd only met Dave once. We were having a nice meal in uh, the Royal Square, <laughs> and Dave came over, and, and we were like, oh, it's been nice weather, hadn't it? And he was like, yeah, it's pretty hot, though. And he just took his pants off and, uh, and then walked away. This was, like, 10 years ago. This wasn't that weird. Like, my, the pants, you mean trousers. I think they're called trousers yeah. in England. Yeah, trousers, mate. Of course it's <laughs> fucking weird. It wasn't that weird. <laughs> I didn't fully take my trousers off. This is like hey, 10 years know, ago when people used to get really drunk, everyone. This was like 10 years ago when everyone was mad and it was a pint was still three pounds. If you, if you think taking your trousers down isn't that weird. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the mental. listeners right now are thinking, I was listening to Sorry to Bother You and you guys are talking about Dave with his fucking pants down. All right, fine. But just, just, just quickly though, let's just do a quick... Trousers, poll, right? let's, let's all just hashtag, get it like trousers. Hashtag trousers up, hashtag trousers down. We'll have a look at the votes. If you think it's weird, <laughs> put hashtag up, hashtag down. For the it, was incredibly, it was incredibly hot and I was wearing some shorts. It was quite, it was quite a hot summer. It was quite a hot <laughs> summer. But, um, so anyway, sorry, Shaf. Back to the film. I just, I'd like to say something as well, that I yeah. actually used to work in a telemarketing role <laughs> as well. Right, so I've actually okay. done this sort of role. Right, okay. Um, so my did you job... Find, did you find it as difficult as he found it initially, Cassius found it initially? It, it, was, it was horrendous. It was my first job in London after the university, and it was a shock to the system that, oh, this is what the real world is like. Mm. And um, I, I'd gone to a recruitment agency, asked to do anything but that, and that's the job they gave me. I lasted, <laughs> um, I lasted three days, and on the third day for the second half of my shift, um, I just remember speaking to these like guys and just saying, "This is the worst. Like this is the worst thing ever. Like how are we in this situation?" What was the company? Remember, it was basically a company who were working for Land Rover. So my job was to ring up people who who owned like Land Rovers and Range Rovers who had been into local dealers to look at new ones. And they'd left their contact details. And my job was to try and convince them that they needed to sell their Land Rover and go into the dealerships and buy a new one. 
and it was horrendous like and there's a scene in the movie where like cassius is like talking to this woman who i think her husband has died or is dying of cancer yeah, or something yeah, yeah. and he's like he sticks to the script which is what they're told and it's so brutal and so cold-hearted but i did something similar when this old granny was like talking to me about how much she missed her family and i was like yeah well maybe you can see them like if you get this new land rover and you can go <laughs> and visit them and it's just like it just reminded me of like oh my god how you sell how you sell your morals and souls just, oh my god it's just yeah. awful i know good I know. thinking um, good thinking you're helping i like it it's yeah it's pretty thing. sharp back in the day but um mm-hmm. That's nice. God, that that telemarketing environment is just horrendous. Um, yeah, I remember like the latest stages. We did it in the bank shaft, le- didn't we? Like cold calling. Before, yeah, so before I left that company, what they would do is they would say basically instead of selling a credit card, or yeah. or yeah, sorry, instead of reporting the sale of a credit card or reporting the sale of you know a, a type of account like a premium account, you what you'd have to report is a conversation you'd have to say so i would say to a manager oh well i sold a, a credit card and he was like no no no, no, no. I, don't, I don't want to know about that tell me about the conversation and then i'll be like oh okay <laughs> uh so basically the person uh is got a girlfriend and um i'm not sure if he's serious but we were talking about maybe you know when he's going to propose and when he if he needs a credit card for and he's like wow. yeah 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 yeah, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm talking about. So yeah. you, you could evidence that you provided the solution to <laughs> yeah, their yeah, yeah. You didn't just sell yeah, exactly. a credit card, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just so like, they, these, these know, motherfuckers, like, they're the ones that made me sell PPI. And yet, yeah, yeah, yeah. five yeah. years down the line, <laughs> when the media got hold of... They, these are the same motherfuckers saying, okay, now, why did you... Do, you definitely did the right thing by selling that PPI, yeah? And I was like, yeah, because you, you were the person that did all my one-to-ones, mm-hmm. and now you're saying that I've got to retract on these, you assholes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this, this I... film nails it to the max. Yeah, yeah. So I'm guessing at least Kyle and Andy, you've done the reading on the cameos of uh, of this film, right? Who, I mean, the voice cameos. Uh, yeah, so yeah. the... Boris Whitaker. Yeah, so Boris Whitaker is the horseman. Then we've got <laughs> Patton Oswald as... Mr. Beeps, yeah, voice, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll yeah, come back yeah, to yeah. that. We'll come back to that. But yeah, Pat Oswalt, he's great. I've not really seen much of his stand up, but he's he's a proper nerd, and he's in quite a lot of Marvel stuff. So he's mm-hmm. I've seen him in Agents of Shield. He's in um, which I've not seen Modoc. He's the voice of that, isn't he? Which yeah, yeah, yeah. I will get around yeah. to watching eventually. Yeah, I started watching that, but then Mikhail was in the room, and there was some. There was oh, some okay. dirty jokes. Yeah. There some dirty jokes. So I was like, it's really <laughs> was he in the room when the rap was uh, being played? <laughs> <laughs> Which none of us can say. The only person yeah. that may be able to say this is you, Chef. Mm. No, I don't think I, I'm definitely not saying that. Well, I'm so, saying well clear. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, so yeah. So then David Cross does Cassius's white voice. Weird thing is, what I found out, and what you guys might already know, is that which I only just found out now was that. I thought the British voice that Tessa Thompson had during the art show was her own accent because she does quite a good convincing British accent as in Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. But I, it's I actually thought she was English. English. I thought she was actually English. Oh. All right. Okay. Yeah, and in Westworld. Wow. Oh, has she got a British accent in Westworld, is she? I don't know. I think so. I might be All wrong right. on that. Hashtag Westworld, yes or no. Sure. <laughs> I don't think People she does. You're trying, really trying to push these hashtags, aren't you, Andy? All right, sorry. <laughs> this is a quadruple bogger. I'm, I'm trying to... I'm, Kyle's always saying, like, push the media, man. Push the media. <laughs> trying to push the media. <laughs> what was the film they were quoting from? Uh, she was quoting from... She was quoting from no, a no. film. I'll, I'll look that yeah. up. Yeah, she was re- reciting a... Um... I saw that the earrings are lyrics from a Bob Dylan song. Is that right? Well, she was always wearing different ones. Yeah. Reminded me of the love and hate knuckles from Do the Right Thing. So yeah, who do you guys know who did the voice of the lift? Yes, oh, it was no. um uh, yeah, forgot her name. Keith Moon. Rosario um, Dawson. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Oh wow. It's the last dragon, Dave. Oh. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, well done. Well done. I haven't seen The Last Dragon since I was like ten years old or something. <laughs> Dave, just one thing. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed our boy Eric Jacobus from the Rope Dope films is um, the head SWAT guy. No, not the SWAT guy. Sorry, the riot police guy. Is it? Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, I didn't. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Viewers, if you're listening, watch both Rope Dope. They are so, 
so good. Viewers, viewers, if you're listening. <laughs> yeah. Man. There you go, Dave. <laughs> Bo- Boots Riley is in the second <laughs> Ropadope film. No way. As the, uh, as the mayor. So, sorry, Andy, sorry to inter- interrupt. What, what did you want to say? So I was just going to say, because you're the host of the most, we've been asking a lot of questions, which is quite cool, but I wanted to ask you a question. So I I love the way this movie was shot. I just think it was like, it, it was, I don't know why, like this is going to be the, and the, this is the reason I'm asking you, because I can't articulate this, but I just <laughs> thought like, I know the, the, the last 20 minutes, could you could say were actually quite dark, but I thought this was incredibly colourful and bright and sharp. And I yeah. just hadn't seen a movie that looks like this in quite some time. I'm not saying it's like, you know, broken any like breaking down any barriers or whatever, but it was just like quite it, like visually, I quite enjoyed what was going on all the time. Even if they're just in the office or whatever, it wasn't just drab or whatever, like it just you know, the outfits they were wearing, it was just quite a cool, trendy vibe. And I just wanted your view on that. So this is all shot in um <clears throat> Oakland, isn't it? Um, yeah. which is where, where Boot, Boots Riley's from. And they're, yeah, I, I mean, I think it sort of shoots like Oakland in uh, quite a sort of a unique way. And yeah, and, and you, you are right. Those sort of colours are quite bold regarding that part of the city. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's all I really sort of have to say, really, that I agree with you. Uh, it is uh, it's very uniquely shot. And, you know, funny thing is, uh, uh, so you, you were describing when he has the phone call when he has those phone calls and he sort of slams into, into their sort of bedroom or yeah. wherever. Where, Amazing. So, Love that. Which, and you sort of think like possibly it's um, quite a quirky thing to happen that would normally happen like in a Michelle Gondry video. Uh, and then in, when you watch that horse video, the claymation horse video, the director, the name of the director is Michelle Dongri. Yeah. And, nice. uh, oh, wow. And the thing is, is that apparently he asked Michelle Gondry to use his name. Apparently he, he initially agreed to it, but then, but then his agents contacted him saying, no, he's not, he's, uh, he is not allowed to use his name. So, so then he changed his name to Michelle Dongri. And he said <laughs> that in his, any further film he's going to do is going to be to oh, sort of um, take the piss out of Michelle Gondry because uh, he hates him now. So. Wow, <laughs> that's a quality story. I had a story as well. I heard the um, I heard the film's title's got a double meaning, so it references both the phrases used by telemarketers, but also its general usage. It's like when you're telling a person something that they might not like to hear, such yeah. as the film's anti-capitalist message. Although that was pretty badass. Mm. That's the whole point of a strike, right? Is in like we, yeah. we, you know, when we were sort of striking in, in more backgrounds in both for the listeners, I, I worked for the government. And when we were striking, that's what we were trying to figure out when to sort of walk out. Was it, you know, when would be the most inconvenient for, you know, for sort of the work operations? And I thought you were going to say when you were working for Blockbusters and then come out with this <laughs> mental story about why. <laughs> <laughs> and we never went back to work. <laughs> we shut that motherfucker down. <laughs> I've, got, uh, I've got lots of stories about Blockbusters, but let's not go into that, but... Because, right. uh, one yeah. day we should just a whole episode devoted yes. to yes yes <laughs> Shuffy wrote be kind rewind <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Michelle Gondry film but that's the thing this film reminds me of Big kind rewind and it reminds me of the science of sleep it reminds me of being John Malkovich and it reminds me of eternal sunshine of a spotless mind but I don't really know why but just something the way it's shot I guess it's just just that sort of slightly off kilter sometimes that it well, makes you think this also, isn't quite real, is it? It's just not quite real. But al- but- also, you know, the thing that Michel Gondry is sort of known for is that he does these sort of surreal things, but it's all practical effects. So that, yeah, that's why, yeah. you know, that, that's why it's all, I'm guessing it probably reminds you of, of um, Michel Gondry because it, everything's sort of in camera. There's not that much sort of CGI. Or like that. Also probably because it's made by, both were made by a non, uh, non-Hollywoody non people as such. They're not from a film background. They're from, oh, yeah, a, yeah, from yeah. a music background or music video background as such. So yeah. I don't know, maybe it's like they've not been caught up in the whole formulaic side of Hollywood. Yeah. Guess who boots, well, after he wrote the script, guess who he approached to direct this, this film? And I don't think you're going to get it. I don't think you're going to guess it. But 
but uh, it likes it's, it's the person you least likely could think of to direct this film. Steven Spielberg. Donald Trump. No. I mentioned him earlier in this recording. Okay, let's think about this. You mentioned wow. a director. Who the fuck Ooh. did you mention earlier? <laughs> I guess you can edit out all the silence that's going yeah, on. Yeah, to be honest, to I have to spend ages editing out Andy's keyboard clicks these days. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, man. Sorry, I'm man. trying to... <laughs> <laughs> um, let me think. Just say it, Shafi. Go on, I'm not going to get it. The actually do, do you know what? Sorry. You go on. Sorry. So, so sometimes when, when you guys are talking, I'm playing poker. So I'll stop playing poker because I think that's what you're hearing, Carl. Okay. <laughs> Fucking there you rude. go. And during, I know, during our call, Dave's is half asleep on, in bed. Or ringing and, the bank. Uh, or, and, yeah, or ringing the bank and Andy's on a poker tournament. Sorry. Yeah, anyway. yeah it's called multitasking. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's sad, man. I can't do that, sorry. So, yeah, he actually approached... Richard Ayoade to oh, direct okay. it. Oh, oh wow. Um, oh, no, I don't think I could do that. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, he actually said, so Richard Ayoade's feedback was, I'm going to refuse to direct it, but also I demand <laughs> that you direct this yourself. So mm. that's how he convinced uh, Boots Ride to direct it. So I'm not sure we've properly conveyed to the listeners how mental this film is. <laughs> It is yeah. so mental. It's just the most mental film I've seen in years. Like the fact that I had to stop it, find my wife, hmm. get her to watch. Like, what was her reaction? Bit. What What was her reaction to it? What, what so she's basically, I'm it. trying to think. Of the, for some reason, the Jen will watch the films with me, like that you've chosen. So, like, I think she joins me like 20 minutes into like Jalaka Two, and was like, right, really? you know, obviously, you like, what the fuck is going on? And then, like, <laughs> the scene at the end, I think she was like, I think you know, she didn't say this. But mm-hmm. if I had to guess, I think she'd think Shafi needs therapy. <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> the next one was The Wailing. To be fair, she loved The Wailing. But again, it's like, how the fuck does Shafi even know about this <laughs> Japanese crazy man in the, like, in, mm-hmm. the, in the forest? And then, and then this one, you know, bearing in mind, she's, she's going around her normal life. And then again, she hears for the third time in a couple of months now, this is the film that Shafi's chosen. And the scene that she sees is a man walking in the shower room and then a giant... Hosscock comes out. <laughs> I just don't know. Like, I, don't, I literally don't know what she makes of you anymore. Like, <laughs> but she's looking forward to your next choice, <laughs> yeah, as am I. Yeah, because they've all been brilliant. Oh, thanks, and this man. is the good thing about this podcast. Like, this is what I've got out of it. Like, uh, as I wider... said, like, I, my barometer of choosing a film is what's yeah, going to get the most, the biggest reaction from Andy. Well, that's good because <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hopefully represent the average stupid idiot out there. So for all the average <laughs> stupid idiots listening, I hope you're getting as much out of this as I, as I am. <laughs> so why why did the power caller guy have his name blanked out? Mm. So they don't really explain that, and I don't. And also, apparently, what was the eye patch about? I, so there is actually no. Okay, so for, first thing is that when when he initially wrote it, he just wrote him as um, fancy suit guy, and uh, but then he changed the he changed the name to Mr. And then it's just basically redacted. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, one thing is that I'm looking on YouTube in the, in the clips, there's a theory and have you guys sort of figured out what this theory is? So there's a theory that he's actually behind. He planned all this from the beginning because he's the one that tells Cassius to go into the room with the CEO. And then when you, when the riot happens and he, you see him sort of smile as he's sort of walking away from the barrier, from the picket line. Wow. So I think he, he instigated that he's basically uh, like a Machiavellian, you know, Cassius is basically his, his puppet and. Right. Okay. And that he's actually used Cassius in order to revolt against what, what's the, what they called? Worry free. uh... Yeah. Worry free. Yeah. So I, th- I think uh, wow. he's actually using Cassius to revolt against, to, to create a revolution against Worry Free because he's sort of seen what, what it is that they're selling, what it is they're doing. Holy moly, that's going okay. Wow. How does he go so quickly from working from the telemarketer straight into Worry Free? Uh, as in Cassius? Well, yeah, technically. Like, and I guess maybe the, the man with no name as well. Like, they're, are they just so invited around like, to a like their client party almost 
and then and then they offer Cassius the job properly. Do you know what I mean? Like, how did he suddenly start? Was he ever working for them? No, he's just like a. No, I don't think he was ever working for Worry Free. He was just selling their product, basically. Yeah. And, and then the only point um, he would have been with a hundred million pound salary for five years. Yeah. So he hadn't. Yeah, he hadn't actually started working for them. Yeah. Interesting. Right. So why did? Yeah. Just so before he went sort of down to see the CEO, the man with no name used his real voice, didn't he? Yeah. 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 Isn't that because Army Hammer's character said, "Well, I don't want to hear your white voice in this party." Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that that's the sort of interesting theory but behind it oh yeah also oh, that's interesting the donald glover was supposed to play the lead role oh um, wow and also and also they he was talking to jordan peele about playing the lead role as well yeah donny glover was going to play cassius green no Do- donald glover donald glover D- donald yeah yeah donald glover uh, um, right, okay. no actually yeah no that's another thing i was going to say is that it's funny that um, Danny Glover's character can he sort of mastered the the white voice, but he didn't end up becoming a power caller. Yeah, there, there are a few because it's funny when Dave was saying, "How does he do it so quickly?" Part of me was like, when I was watching it, I felt that, and I was like, I just kind of washed it over with like, okay, he's just he's just got this well, they, trick, but he's just very talented, and that's yeah, possible. they kind of well, just made, have to well, accept that. They did a montage, didn't they, of high fives? So that was kind of like Rocky yeah. training. He was just doing it, he was selling, yeah. selling, selling, high fives, high fives. And now, Dave, can you please do the rap song? <laughs> <laughs> that's that scene is hilarious. Mm. That's great, mm. that because that's just like I thought that. Although it's so simple, it's so smart at the same time, like. God, how do we how do we convey what we're what we're talking about here? So basically, well, there's a scene. <laughs> no, no, it's too dangerous. I'm I'm staying away from this. Shaf, Sh- Sh- you're the you're the well. I mean, he, he, not, not, without going into context of it, but basically, they just want because they see he's black, they they want him to rap, even though he has no interest in rapping and he he can't rap. And uh, very, so he ends up. Uh, Talented. And the thing the before b- thing before is, is uh, <laughs> before he starts uh, doing the the n word part of that rap, his rap is very much like Shaffy in nineteen ninety three. Mm-hmm. We're at right. school. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I <laughs> am Shaffy. <laughs> <laughs> I like comic books. I like the way they look. <laughs> I don't think I ever rapped. Did I? Did I ever rap? <laughs> um, well, no, technically not. Yeah. I still, I still love that. The, my, the one of my favorite days with Shafi was when we went into the comic book store, and the comic book owner just went to the <laughs> toilet, and he still had two balls left in his in his pinball machine. And Shafi took those go- goes and got like zero points or whatever. And the comic book guy went mental. He went, <laughs> he went mental. mental. He it was so mental. nuts. It was honestly one of the most nuts things ever. <laughs> he had to leave the comic book store. <laughs> yeah. The comic yeah. book guy. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, what were that. you thinking, Shaffy? It's so outrageous. No, you I mean, like man's seven years old guy. or something. It's funny though when you're young like that and a stranger grown up just goes completely apeshit at you. It's like, whoa, <laughs> this is nuts. I'm used to my parents doing this, but a complete stranger is just like, <laughs> exactly. whoa, this yeah. is yeah. mental. You're a complete stranger, and just because we had a, I used up your pink. Well, why did you stay away from the machine then, you twat? Mm. Like I don't know, I don't know if this is just me, but I swear to God, he looked in my memory exactly like comic book guy from The Simpsons. Yeah, exactly. like it's that's the exactly same exactly guy. Where every know. single viewer is thinking. He, he was thin. He was thin. <laughs> oh yeah. mate, yeah. mate. Well, um, where was this shop? Near Rosewall Street, mate. In Columbia, it's basically where there's like a there's a Thai um like wholesale shop there now. I don't remember it at all. I can't remember that. Oh mate. Yeah, man, it, I, it made, you know, I was just like, I can't believe this. Like next door, man. I'm I'm really into comic books, and I, you know, I can't find comic books anywhere. And then just like round the corner from me is the <laughs> next door. Next door. I, I was just like, this is just amazing. Um, yeah. And then, and then basically they would be like, uh, oh yeah, this ten year old keeps on coming in, and we're trying to sell him loads of shit. <laughs> like I remember, like he said, um, like I was into. Uh, by the way, you can edit all this shit out. But no, no, uh, this, I remember, this is what like, people tune in for. <laughs> I remember, mm-hmm. like, I, you know, he he knew I was into X Men, and he went, "Oh, by the way, there's there's this uh, you can get this collection of um phone cards with all the X Men like pr- uh, printed printed on on the front." And uh, and he was like, "And you know what? 
um, you could actually use the phone card. So, you know, what you could do is you could buy two collections, you know, one mm. for sort of, it's like, you're <laughs> like saying this to a fucking 10 year old, mate. And <laughs> how much money good. do you think I've got? <laughs> is anyone, is anything else you want to sort of say about this film or? Yeah. Why, why does Army Hammer wear a skirt? Oh yeah. Did he wear a skirt in it? Yeah. Yeah, like he's wearing a suit yeah. and then he's kind of this is like a Jalu Katu conversation again. He had to like hold it when he was walking and stuff. It was very similar to that. I, d- I didn't know whether that was just some new age hippie sort of billionaire vibe going on. Yeah, and it was weird, um, though, wasn't it? And also apparently put green contact lenses in the in the film when he actually has blue contact lenses. So I think it was a whole look that he was going for. In my theory, is there no chance that he is he did take the hundred million, and he and then he is actually undercover. Is that well, any that's, chance? That's interesting. That that is very interesting. That's what sort of entered my head. It's how it's quite yeah. the cover story, isn't it? But he got, yeah, but he, but he sort of freaked out afterwards, and he went and he kept on saying to like his uh, girlfriend, uh, "You know, do, do my nostrils look? But is in yeah. is in in fear? So like, I don't." I don't think. Yeah, uh, I just, I just purposely. I don't think you can ha- rule it out. Have to go along I with don't it. think. I think the fact that he turned into, like, you know, because he turned into the the pony person, you know, they, they, you you could imagine him going back and having a conversation like, right, I'll take the, you know, the hundred million now and all the rest of it. Yeah. But what was interesting as well is like, I don't know if you remember, there was a scene where he was chasing a car, and he falls over, right. And it's he, as he falls over, it's it's almost like he's he's um, his legs are really weak and he stumbles a bit like a baby horse. And at that stage in the film, he would have been essentially a baby horse because he was turning. We now know he was turning into one. You should watch that scene again and watch the way he stumbles. It's really interesting. Right, interesting. Uh, there's like there's loads of horse stuff uh, around Army uh, Hammer's like office, isn't there? He's got yeah. like a the plate that he snorts the coke off is got a, a, a picture of a horse on it. And I think there's like horse paintings in the background as well. The world's <laughs> biggest line as well. A 30 centimeter line. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's it. I wondered like last week why Kyle had posted that, that picture of the sex doll horse on the throne. I was like, yeah. what the fuck? Why is everyone talking about this? Oh, yeah. God, I didn't get that at all. Jesus. Yeah, I yeah. didn't get that at all. I was like, what the fuck is Kyle into these Well, that's because you hadn't seen, you, got, you both hadn't seen the film, but it was only me that put lol after you faced Yeah, and that's what it, I was so. like. I was like, oh, maybe Shafi's into this as well. That's a bit weird. You alluded to it at the beginning of this, uh, when you were recapping it, and you said that the talk show, of I got the shit kicked out of me. And uh, yes. in a way, that sort of, so um, Cassius has to, he wants to um, show like the, the public, you know, expose the public on what, what, what's actually happening, you know, regarding the, you know, mutating people into horses. And the only way he, he could do it is appearing on this show called I Got the Shit Kicked Out of Me. And, and then basically what happens, he says, can I show my clip? He's like, no, 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 we, we need you to, what do you, what do you say? You need to like uh, be, be like, be we need to dump. Go in a bat yeah, of shit. <laughs> bat of shit. And I think, you know, that sort of comments on like the way talk shows are at the moment, because yeah. they, they don't, I find it so weird the way it's, talk shows have changed where they fucking make you do this shit where you have to sort of like play, you know, rap to a nursery rhyme or yeah, like do, throw a football in like a vat of balloons or some shit like that it's like Japanese like, game shows you literally get kicked in the testicles you're like it's literally <laughs> like this show like it's the same thing but, like. but the thing is that I, I watch those like Jimmy Fallon shows and I you could just see like the like and also like people trying to be yeah, pretending to be night. friends pretending to be friends with James Corden and like pretending <laughs> oh, to like God. them and stuff and it's like <laughs> you know it's like I'm sure like a, like an hour earlier like George Clooney or whatever is like, who the fuck is James Gordon? And but yeah, like, oh, but he sits down with him as if he's like their best mates. They've known each other for I so know. long. And uh, back to and the I, mansion and like coma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What so, is what is James Gordon's show called? Is it the Sight Show? Or? I think it's called late, the late, late Show. Well, oh, the Late Late Show. That's right. Yeah. It's it's mad you say that stuff because like this a lot of this film you could say it's set in the f- a twisted future, but a lot of it's happening now. Like apparently Boots Riley the the catchphrase of um of the no worries company was going to be like no worries 
making America great again. But he had oh, to yeah, stop yeah, that yeah, because yeah, Trump yeah. used it. It's fucking yeah, yeah, mental, yeah. like. Yeah, he said that. He said, you know, he said that um, the Mister, you know, blank. He he uses <clears> that line. He says that line in the uh, isn't that he originally wrote that that as a line of dialogue that um, you know, worry free will make America great again, and that was during yeah. the Obama. Um, administration yes. and then when uh, Trump started using it in his campaign he was like oh no this is too on the nose so we've got to sort of get, get rid of this Do you want to quickly talk about the soundtrack Shafi? Yeah so the score's done by Tune Yards, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that band They're, they do some really good music and then the actual songs are done by The Coup. It's interesting like The Coup they, The Coup are one of those groups where no one really sort of talks about when they talk about like some of the the sort of most like consistent i think they are one of like the most consistent hip-hop groups yes yeah, and they they're sort of consistent in quality and uh no one no one seems to sort of ever talk about them uh well definitely like in the rap forums that i sort of go on the internet no one really sort sort of seems to talk about mm. them but i think they're i think they're uh <laughs> i can imagine brilliant. that's a toxic place isn't it oh man <laughs> it, i got I, I ended up unfollowing every rap twitter like per wow. person because it's just so annoying it's so annoying because what they do is they make you they play these games where choose what choose one album out of this like you know and all that stuff and it's just like and then when you when you do sort of express an opinion you get loads of people sort of berating you and stuff so uh yeah i mean i'd, I'd recommend listening to steal this album that's a great album and uh party music that's another great album as well have you heard the synopsis of boots riley's next film it's called I'm a Virgo and it's about a 13 foot tall man. And Jarrell Jerome will play the lead. Yeah, so they're sort of developing it at the moment. Let's hear everyone's one word review. It's the one word review. One word review. One word review from us to you. Except for Dave who says, it's the best. Andy, what's your one word review? My one word review, Shafi, is sharp. Sharp? Okay. Yeah. And what's your one word review, Kyle? Okay, and Dave, what's your one word review? Um, Thought provoking. Oh, so you're not, you're going off brand. You're not doing a, a long tirade about the film. No, I just, yeah, it's I can't. It's hard do to it. talk about this film. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, I can say, we'll just say, it's an experience. That's my long tirade. Tirade. Okay. Whatever you said last week you weren't doing it anymore. Tirade. Okay, cool. So, Shafi, I think we've got some feedback, haven't we? Oh, we've got some feedback. Yes. Do you uh, want to read it up? It's time for feedback. It's time for feedback. What you got to say? It's feedback time. So, this is from Will from Jersey. He said, uh, I've listened to the first two episodes. I uh, haven't had a chance to write a review yet, but I will. have followed you guys on Insta and gave it five stars in the iPhone podcast app. It's really good, though. Really enjoyable. I should really watch the film before <laughs> listening, as I think it will add to the experience. You bounce off each other is good. Um, <laughs> and there's definitely roles within your group dynamic. Obviously, you're the host. Andy's very quick, funny, and his personality shines through. Dave is like the opposite to Andy. Doesn't say much, but funny when he does contribute. Kyle seems more technical film buff as well as you. Look forward to listening to the rest of it. I'm glad there was a second sentence with my description there. Hmm. But yeah, you can obviously send any feedback to who dropped the popcorn at gmail.com and we'll, we'll read it out. And leave us a review on uh, on your podcast app. Yeah, yeah, I'll do all that at the end. I'll do all that at the end. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Okay. So, Kyle. The bit, so, what we've done is we. This is the third round, and we're coming to the very end of the third round. So, Kyle, end us strong. What is your choice for the next episode? Okay. Much like the third third part of the MCU ended with a double feature of Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War, other way around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to end with a double feature. So, sorry, I'm breaking noise. the rules. You've got to watch two films. Wow. The Holy first, fuck balls. The first film is from 1984, again. Quality. Oh, here we go. Here we and go. And this film also stars, and I fucking forgot his name, um, the guy Mario that played Sanchez. 
the guy that played Al in <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Dean Stockwell. <laughs> Dean Stockwell, yeah. Um, this film from Brilliant. 1984 was directed by, written and directed by David Lynch, and it's called Dune. <gasps> wow. And once you've watched that film, you need to go to the cinema and you need to watch, watch the 2021 20, version directed by Denis Villeneuve, which is also called <laughs> Dune. Yeah, wow. boy. Wow, holy shit. And we're just so going to do got... one, one review, are we? Yeah, so you, yeah, we're going to do one review. episode. Let's watch the first one on my laptop in my van down by the sand dunes. <laughs> Honestly, guys, let's, <laughs> let's do this. And Die then Martin. <laughs> we'll do that in... In the, it, we'll start that one at six and then we'll go immediately to the cinema and watch the nine o'clock showing of the other one. No, yeah, yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. Magic. We should all, I think we should watch that opening weekend when it, it does yeah. come out. Holy shit, this is fucking, this is like an so, adventure. And so none, none of us three have seen Dune. I, I haven't seen Dune. No, I haven't seen the first Dune. I've seen Tremors. There is some similarities, yeah. <laughs> The next one I'm going to say, I'd like you to watch Men in Black, followed by Men in Black 2. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. Oh, God. All right, nice one. Okay, Kyle, do you want to tell the listeners how they can get in touch with us? Yeah, you can uh, get in touch with us. Please send any questions, comments, praise, hate mail, or one-word reviews to whodropthepopcorn at gmail.com. And like, follow, harass us on Twitter at whopopcorn or on Instagram at who dropped the popcorn. Mm-hmm. You can also leave a review on your podcast app and please remember to like and subscribe. You've been listening to the Who Dropped the Popcorn. We really appreciate it. See you soon. Thanks guys. Bye.